Can we give a round of applause for all the shapers that we have up here? Timmy Patterson, Darren Hanley, Chris Boris. And the star of our film, Kolo Handino. So you'll notice that we're one shaper short tonight. Axel Lorenz couldn't make it. He had heart surgery last week, so he uh, wasn't able to travel. But uh, yeah, our thoughts and prayers are with him right now. He's healing up quickly, and I'm sure we'll be in our final next year. This will be really fun because I don't know who has more social anxiety, me or the three shapers. So together we'll all get what, through what this. About, what about me? <laughs> You're used to it by now at this point. Uh, all right. So looking around you, brother, which one of these shapers surprised you tonight that's up here? Um, well, not really. I just thought, I really thought that uh, Timmy's was a Pizel and DH's was a Xanadu and I thought Boris was a CI, so... But <laughs> <laughs> any of the shapers, though, that like when you learned about like even just who was in the list this year when you shot when you saw 13, was there a name that kind of stood out to you the most? Um, not really. I mean, I've, I've tried most of everyone's boards um, except for like uh, three or four. Um, so I was just excited to try those boards. And then I was a little bummed that John didn't shape his board. Pizel. Pizel, yeah, right. because it would have been nice to try one. <laughs> <laughs> for the all-star editions we'll get john to shape one all right moving on to some of the other questions we have right now so these questions are all pulled they're curated from our staff premium members so thank you for those that submitted questions online um continue to do so whenever we ask christian bocut who's waving to the grom or your daughter which one daughter uh <laughs> back <of> here yeah <laughs> All right, so first question for all the shapers. Who, who did you guess it was? And we sent out the invite, and for those that don't know, we sent out an invite. We only give them the dimensions, the height and weight of the surfer, their fin preference, and where we're going. So, Timmy, you're the closest to brother. Why don't you, who was your first guess of who you thought it was this year? Brother. Brother. <laughs> what, what? No, by, I mean, I, we broke it down. Me and uh, one of the guys that operates the machine, we just sat there and we're like, looked on the... Um, WCL, all everybody's measurements. I'm like, I thought it was Kanoa or Harry Bryant for some reason. I'm like, okay, that guy rips. He's gonna be in Indo. But he does this 2% crew, and I knew they were filming. I'm like, it's gotta be brother. So I specifically, I'm like, I gotta make it just for brother. I don't care anybody else. If, it's, if it is, it is, but if it isn't, it won't work. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was cool. I just kind of really focused in on that, and, and the board design itself was, just a old familiar board for me. Don't jump ahead. I have another question laid out for that. Just yeah. simple yes, knit name. It was brother. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That was my impulse. Uh, <laughs> Darren. Um, every year when I get invited, I just send the email straight to Mick Fanning. Go, who is it? <laughs> <laughs> and he went through and looked. And he said, "Yeah, it's definitely Chloe." I thought, oh, "That's easy." <laughs> so. He actually, actually, he said it's either Kaloha or Chris Amor, so it was Kaloha. We, we worked that out. Yeah, I called around a few people, uh, then I called Jordy Collins, and he thought it was Medina, so I was way off. What, <laughs> what, what made him think that it was Gabriel Medina? What's that? What made him think that it was Medina? Uh, just the size of the board and the fin system. When shaping a board for Stab in the Dark, and Chris, since you're holding the mic, sorry just to put you on the spot like this, yeah. but does, what thought goes into it? Do you put more thought into it? Like, what's the sort of walk us through the preparation that goes into all this? Uh, I just thought with one of these guys, because I deal with Taylor and Katie, I just try to get something in between. That and, was it. That was my thought. And this is our, the last one on this one, too, is how much more time goes into shaping a board for Stab in the Dark than, say, for the board for the final five at Lowers last year? And, Chris, you had Katie in there, so break that down. I mean, it's probably hard to put hours next to it, but walk us through that, put us and in the room. And I gotta be honest, every board, I can't put it down until it's done, I don't care who is, who is it for. So, <laughs> yeah. Darren? You don't make enough boards in. Um, <laughs> um, 
I, uh, I usually make the board that whatever I'm, whatever's working at the time, and, and that after Ethan was surfing uh, quite well out here at Trestles for the final five, and all the effort I put into that, so I just sort of got that board, and I've made Kolohe a few boards before, and I just looked up his old files that he didn't like, and um, made some adapts <laughs> and put a round, put a Stephanie Gilmore round tail on it, and um, and but yeah, it, it takes about 25 to 45 minutes to shape a board, and I made one. I wasn't happy with it, which is the first time ever in Step in the Dark I've gone to a second board. And then I made the second board. As I, was fi as I finished it, I was walking upstairs with it, fell over, put two big dings in it. Because it's getting sprayed, I just steamed them out, covered it up with the spray, and maybe that's the secret why, you, why we made the final. <laughs> <laughs> Anything you want to add to that, Chloe? Uh, the best boards always get ruined before you ride them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So what was the question now? <laughs> <laughs> How much effort do you put into shaping for Stab in the Dark as opposed to, say, for the final five? I always think this, I've done a couple before, and kind of they were effortless almost. But this one I did think a little more, so. Why was that? Because um, I want to get up here on stage. <laughs> no, it's just, I mean, for us guys, it's, it's such a blessing to be up here and share our experiences. The guys always get that. The shapers are stuck in a dusty room, you know. Yeah. But we're here, and so it's pretty cool to see everybody, you know, finally. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to, yeah. yeah, thank you. This next question, Darren, is for you. When you've seen a lot, and Chloe, actually, I'm gonna hand the mic over to you for just a second, and forgive me, Chloe, I've asked you this last time we were up here uncomfortably. Uh, you hear it now over and over again in each season, what it means to hold a surfboard and they go, oh, this feels like an Australian board. So I'm gonna ask you first, like what that actually means and what gives it away. And then Darren, get your take on that as well. <laughs> gonna run me through the test, see what I say. <laughs> um, <laughs> I always felt like it was the, the, the lightness of the, um, the glassing. Um, that was about it. I felt, always heard now you're going to embarrass me because they might correct me, but <laughs> I've always heard that when it's hotter, the, the, the resin is thinner, so it's easier to get the board lighter. Um, is that true? Yes. Okay. Not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think because it's so hot down there, they could, they could get the boards lighter. Um, and then especially in like January and February, you could really tell the difference because it's so cold here. Um, so yeah, it was always the weight that um, for me gave it away. That's a pretty good answer. Darren? Uh, yeah, you're spot on on the on that. Like Mick Fanning used to always say, he, he wish he could order his whole hundred boards in January, and February because they're better, uh, they're lighter. They're um, there's something about the humidity in that at that time that makes a board a lot better. But I think the difference between Australian boards and um, you know American boards, I feel, is just I don't know the noses are thinner, the the there's more rocker because our waves are more curvy and stuff like that, and we specialise in that sort of in that sort of um, boards. But it's the same as me trying to make boards for you know surfing some like Huntington and stuff like that. It's quite difficult for me, but to make boards for good waves because we have a lot of good waves being snapped to Rambar, Kira, and all those spots. It, it it sort of comes natural. And then just <laughs> there's a couple of kids in the audience, so for this next question, you might want to cover their ears, but. This is from Sam McIntosh. You wanted me to ask this question right now. And, yeah, for you, Darren. Um, Kolohe laughs because he knows it's going to be something uncomfortable that I have to say. <laughs> We'd be remiss not to ask it, but Darren, was John Pizel offended when you said he was kissed on the dick by a fairy in our House Surfers Get Paid series? No, he's definitely not offended. Um, and John can you just describe maybe for those that haven't seen the House Surfers Get Paid what that means and who that's in reference to? Yeah, look, they asked me a few questions, and, um, and like, I have uh, quite a large team, so does most of the shapers in the world, but, you know, John's got the one guy, and, you know, he's got a few girls and that now, but John, uh, John John is, you know, an exceptional surfer, and, and I just said, you know, John got kissed on the dick by a fairy by just growing up in his, his, his town, and he said... <coughs> Back to me, well, I've been kissed on the dick by a few times by fairies because of Mick Fanning, Stephanie Gilmer and all that, which he's right, you know, but 
at that time, I just said, <laughs> <laughs> at that time, I was just off the, <laughs> off my, you know, off the cuff and, um, and, but John and I, we have good banter. I love banter with all the shapers. It's, it's pretty good. So John's pretty good. Matt's, once you get through Matt's um, facade, he's really good to have banter with as well. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, so I love, I love all the shapers. They're pretty good. Britt Merrick's not a bad bloke either. <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, all right, next question. Timmy, describe why you chose to revive the Alley Rat. This model is two decades old now. Um, 2003, I think, is when you first had it. Chloe was what, seven? That would make seven you, or yeah, seven. Like so, um, walk us through what the thinking of there to, to bring this one back. I mean, almost what he said. I mean, that was kind of when, as older models, like 2000, I was looking at at the. I still have the template for hand shaping, and it matched it. So just being able to, everything was rockered out a little bit more chippy in the nose. But with some of the programs and what you could do and just shaping so many boards, you just dial it in, kind of bring it up to like that basic design up to today's you, you standards said, almost. You yeah. said something earlier that you'll wake up in the middle of the night and just get inspired by something and you have to go shape that board. Was this one of those moments where it just came to you or did you kind yeah, of like? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I just had an idea. I'm like, I'm not. I did one an Italo for Italo, and he didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> that was, was pissed. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm just gonna do what I like to do, my thing, you know. Instead of, I didn't even think about it so much. I'm like, I like this board. It works good. It's kind of what the guys used to ride. I mean, I'm taking rockers off older boards, like literally measuring from Matt Archibald to Timmy Reyes. Um, Jordy's old boards that I've shaped, and they're all identical. Right. Same as this board. I'm like, so weird from 20 And on that plus. point, though, you sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but you also yeah. said that you just had that feeling like this was the right one, and then you're so excited, Chloe gets up on, gets on it for the first time, comes back in, the first time you hear him speaking about the board, he calls it chunky. And actually, before you even wrote it, you were already saying it felt heavy in the tail, it was chunky, <laughs> pretty much wrote it off before it even got wet. When you hear something like that, do you want to walk away? Do you keep watching? Like, cause no, I like it. <clears throat> it um, like even what he said, it's like that time of year, the resin thinner, or even that day's worker, whoever's doing it. I almost glassed them, but they're already done be by the time I got to work. So you have to have a thick skin, basically, to be able to sit through, <laughs> hear that, and then want to keep watching through, and then he keeps. Yeah, you got to see what it does. <laughs> yeah. Something kind of moving on to, with, with Chris right here. This next one's for you. Uh, I'm not sure how they figured this out, but something that we all admired that you did was when you dropped off your surfboard uh, to the office, I think it was just a couple days before we had to leave to go on that shoot. At that point, all the other boards submitted were lined up, and you could see, I think it was either six or eight boards up there. And most times when a shaper drops a board off, they drop theirs off, don't kind of turn a blind out of the rest there and walk out of the office, but you stood there and you looked at each one, even picked them up. And I think one of the first things we heard you say was, fuck, I should have done a squash, or what was it, round tail, or what? you had something, your reaction to it. How, how did that sort of take us into that room and what that felt like, and even, um, yeah, any regret, or yeah, just talk us through that. Yeah, because I was thinking about doing a round tail, and Taylor said something about just doing a squash tail, and I wind up dropping the boards off, or yeah, they dropped the boards off, and I seen all these round tails, and I was just like, Oh my God, I shouldn't have listened to him. <laughs> God, I screwed up. And then um, when you, actually this next question is for you, Chloe. When you took the Borst out, oh, I'll just give you a, yep, whatever. Uh, when you took the Borst out for one last surf in that last episode, was there something that you were looking specifically for or was there more of like, would take us through that last sort of part on, that, on the last couple of ways to set you apart between that and Pizel? And Pizel's in the room right now, so no pressure. Is he? Well, not John, but the team Pizel is here. Oh, that John doesn't, doesn't shape boards for you, does. or doesn't come to your premiere, so don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, I was just kind of embarrassed with how my whole performance was that day, so I just felt like whoever the shaper was, I actually thought that um, it was a Merrick, so I was like, oh, he deserves to actually, at least like for me to ride a couple good waves in order for the audience to like clearly see that it should advance, you know, so kind of a lot of like, I don't know, saving yourself with the whole thing because you shape or shape the board so you owe them like respect to like 
ride enough waves so that people can understand what you're saying when you come in. You know, because a lot of the times you could, right when you stand up, you could tell if you like it or not. Yeah. But you still have to ride those, you know, five to ten waves each board. And when I first took out the, um, his board that morning, I was kind of like, uh, works okay. And then the other two were worse. So I was like, okay, I'm going to try to get some good waves on this one and did a little air, whatever. But was there like a certain like putting it on, you felt like, cause you said it didn't have drive on it, but like, were you getting more out of that one section? Were you pushing hard on the tail? Like what was, was there anything that stood out in that exact moment that hadn't in other ones? Um, I think it's pretty clear that I was just like, that I'm just, I like drive. Yeah. And the four boards that made it were the, were the driviest boards. And, um, out of those three boards that morning, the boards had the most drive. Question on the spot that's not from a staff premium member. You kept coming back to like, see, <laughs> this board's a CI, this board's a CI. Why did that one stick out that is like, like th if it's not this one, it's this one? What, what do you mean? Like, so if it's not, if it, you kept getting lost in your own head of like, it's got to be a CI. Like you kept having to think that every board, you, any Forced board, because <laughs> there's a couple that you were like, oh, this is a CI. No, fuck, that's a CI. <laughs> like why, why was CI even in your head of like that that had to mean? I don't know. I just, I know, <laughs> I just didn't want to fucking win. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. There we go. The truth finally came out. We had to probe and probe and probe and we got I'm it. I'm kidding. I'm <laughs> kidding. But, um, no, that's why you're all thinking, so I just had to say it. Um, no. No, I just, I, the way that CIs, I've, writ, I've written or wrote, I don't know, whatever, CIs, um, and, they're, and they work good, but they're just really curvy and, they're, and they like don't have a lot of drive, so... Every board that I hopped on f that felt like that, or when I would hold it and it would be like bending out, I'd be like, oh, it's a CI, because I just thought the curvy boards. But then all the boards ended up working like that. It felt like a lot of rocker maybe is on trend or, or was <laughs> then or whatever. So I just was like saying every board is a CI. <laughs> no, fair enough. All right, last couple questions here. I promise we'll get to these last ones. Um, this is just more to understand just how this sort of this project can affect the, the shapers here on it. Has, does this project influence, like, are more people picking up the phone, are you seeing more orders, more retail, like, how does it sort of impact your business um, beyond just the, like, feedback from a semi-pro surfer? No, just kidding. Your words, not mine. <laughs> semi-retired, semi sorry, semi-retired. Sorry, I butchered that one. <laughs> Which is one of the best lines in the whole, whole series. Uh, sorry, keep going. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, we'll see, you know. It's interesting. It's just nice to dive into a, a board and really get into it. It kind of gives you uh, a lot of respect for what he does too, you know. So it's more respect for the surfer that I get out of it and the other guys. You're like, it's kind of our finals for the WSL, you know. Yeah. It's a big deal for all of us. I think Britt Merrick said it was like the, it's like winning a world title for the Shapers, right? It's a, yeah. Yeah, because he's won so many times. <laughs> <laughs> but here's Darren. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, you wait and see. I mean, making the final is fantastic. Gives you um, notification around the world that you're still at the head of your game, which is really good. Um, but as far as sales go, um, yeah, it, it's, it's driven the thing that Ethan Ewing's board goes good, not just for himself, but also for Kolohe, the way we saw in that um, third, episode, third episode or second episode, second episode. So yeah, it, it will drive a little bit of sales, but um, um, yeah, but you know, sometimes when you win, when we won the first one with uh, Julian Wilson, that, that, that was the first one, first time I was ever done, and that was a really big spike in sales, but since then, you have a little spikes, but I think that first stab in the dark was like a game changer for us uh, 10 years ago. Yeah, this is the ninth one. So if you see Chloe has number nine on his jersey, this is the ninth uh, version of uh, Stab in the Dark. So Chris? Yeah, <laughs> I think for me, it's definitely made people more aware because I've been so undercover for so many years, been doing it for 35 years, and I did it with the same thing with my skateboarding. I've just always been pretty low key, so it just definitely has brought me more attention, exposure. Appreciate it, Chloe. Hey. Yeah, well done. <laughs> All right, last question, Kolohe, who wins? 
Cole Simler. <laughs> All right, let's start it. Thank you guys. Uh, one more round of applause for all the shapers up here.